Um, hello. Uh, my name is, is Marcos. I work as a kernel of patch developer for SUSE. And today I'm going to talk about moving our self tests for live batch into K self tests and the obstacles and problems that we found in the process. So, this is our agenda. So, talk about K self tests, what, what it is, its goals, and how the tests are run today for our live, te for our live batch self tests. The problems that we found uh, uh, when trying to move the test to K self tests and our proposal to solve the problem. Um, so, um, what's K self tests and, and, its, and its goal? So, K self tests is designed to exercise exactly uh, some exact code paths in the kernel, and it has some, not restrictions, but some ways to, to work around that. So, it only accepts user, user space tests, uh, but there's this, there is a kernel module. Uh, the BPF one, which is big inside, but currently the the rule is to only accept user space tests. And these user space, they are divided into some shell scripts, uh, bash and stuff, and, and some user space programs to exercise these calls and and, and other general verifications. Um, so and case of tests has some useful uh, targets, so you can run on the top level here using make case of test targets. You also can pass more than one, but we are currently using the live patch. And whenever, okay. Um, just to relate to too much to there. Uh, just about the user, I mean, only user space tests. I mean, there's BPF module, K, uh, Ftrace uses modules. So the self test actually checks, is this module loaded? I'll run the tests. So we has, actually have test modules. So, so it's not totally strict. It's just that you can't fail the test if it's not there. You just say unsupported or uh, uh, not. No, I mean the, the test, right. they call the test, the, the modules, they live inside case, case of test, but they, they only check if the module is loaded, right? But the, the module code lives outside case of test. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's that, what I meant. I, I, Sorry. Okay, that's, I was a little confused by that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. That's because we want to try to move code inside case of test structure for our uh, purpose that we will detail be after all. Um, so yeah, there are some, some targets just to run the test and to do some other stuff. And every new subsystem that uh, uh, applies to case of tests, they need to comply with these targets. And there is also the Gintar target for self-tests, which packs all uh, uh, some um, different live test, live, sorry, it packs some self-tests uh, uh, like live patch, BPF and stuff. But it only packs binaries. So I asked it on the mailing list about the purpose of the Gentar, and yeah, I didn't receive a direct answer about that. But it currently only packs binaries. So how to test these binaries in different systems? Yeah, that's an open question. Um, um, yeah. Thank you. So this is a question to, to the audience. Is here anyone who knows? What Gentile is for? How how is it used? What's it, what's the reason it lives in the kernel? Can we just get rid of it? Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, Gent is that something self uh, yeah. Yes. A, someone what? remote. Oh. oh, Mark Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. It, Gentar is used by automated systems so, uh, when they they build the self test as part of the kernel build, and then they and then they want to deploy it onto a target system, so they take the tarball uh, and sh and uh, ship that around. Uh, okay, so do you know are there some requirements like because no, so you you build binaries. Uh, on some system, you pack them, then try to deploy them on some other other machine. So, are there any requirements like about libraries being present if they are used for the self test? Uh, I mean, they, they will need to be um, present, but the, um, the expectation is that the uh, people running the tests will sort that out. I mean, th there's already extensive library, well, 
reasonably substantial library dependencies in other case self tests. So it wouldn't be um, it wouldn't be too radical a thing. Um, it helps if the libraries are widely available in distributions. Uh, otherwise, people will probably just not run the self tests um, if it's too much pain to enable it. Um, but it's not it's not a problem to rely on libraries per se. It's just a deployability issue. Okay. Yeah, but for our future proposal, it's kind of uh, is an obstacle for us. So yeah, I have. I will add more details. Uh, and so, uh, how we are currently testing our live patch modules using case self tests. Um, so they currently live on slash lib live patch, and they are only compiled on kernel build. So, and you also need to add a specific uh, K config to to make those being built. Uh, so there's a question: How we test this? how we move those tests to machines without a uh, specific uh, cloned kernel source. Um, and also about distro kernels, how do you use these tests on distro kernels that don't enable that option, right? And so that's the current way that we test uh, these uh, self-test tests, right? Sorry, the, the name is hard. <laughs> So first, we need to, to build the kernel using the config live patch and config test live patch. And install the modules, install the kernel, reboot, and then we go to the same uh, machine and run make case of test target equals live patch. So that doesn't scale. So if you want to test the same live patch self-test on different uh, uh, kernels, so yeah, we need to have the kernel source there to make that happen. And so what we have now, we also have this QA test KOP that lives in, in, in GitHub. It's, these are out of three tests. Um, these tests, they are compiled on the fly before the tests are running. And this is what our QA teams on SUSE are using before releasing a, a, new, a new version. And we have this idea about moving these tests to case self-tests. And that's how we came to that Gentar uh, target and yeah, that kind of is an obstacle uh, since it compiles the modules, but then if you test in a different kernel, the, the ver magic doesn't match and we can load them the modules. Um, yeah, so one of the weak points of, of case of tests. Um, yeah, so how to get these tests uh, to be run on different systems? I'm not sure if you guys have any ideas besides moving the kernel source to those to those machines. So yeah, if you have, please. <laughs> um, yeah, and also as I said, uh, currently there is a restriction in case of tests that they don't include uh, kernel modules. And so uh, if we include them, there are a couple of rules to, to build code inside case of tests, but there are no rules to build modules. We did that. Uh, and, but when, <laughs> when the Gentar is run, those modules, they are packed together uh, with, with the user space uh, um, tools and tests. But then we can load those modules on different machines, right? Uh, not different machines, but with different versions and different kernels. So yeah, so the Gentar, at least for us, is not that useful and or its purpose was not clear when we checked. So our proposal to the problem, uh, I sent a patch set. It's already on, v on V3. The first two versions had issues with K-Build and stuff. So I had to go through that. K-Build uh, is, uh, is huge <laughs> and just to understand those, Cryptic rules is kind of difficult for one that is trying to implement something new. But yeah, I believe all those issues they are addressed. Move our live patch uh, tests to case self tests, right? Uh, where we currently have some bash scripts to test those those modules. And with this move, we also remove that config test live patch uh, config as well from the kernel. Uh, it was already being used in some different dev config on different architectures uh, about S390 and PPC, if I remember correctly. So it's one less config to the kernel, which is always good. 
Um, and yeah, so what we currently do is before running the tests, I created a new a new target inside the case of tests, just to specify a directory containing modules, right? And yeah, just jump there, uh, compile them, <laughs> and then uh, run the tests, and it works. So currently, our tests used uh, mod probe just to load the modules because they were meant to be installed. But yeah, I has I had to change to ins mod just to make sure it points to the right place. And now we need kernel headers to compile that. But yeah, don't think that's a problem. And yeah, our proposal is just to port uh, all other tests for QA test KOP um, GitHub repository. They uh, There are up to 15 tests there, if I remember correctly. And in this V3 version that I sent, I implemented the first of them, which tries to, which uh, live patches the get bid uh, system call. And we have, uh, if I remember correctly, some user space code on loop just try just execute and get bid and we make sure that they transition to the patched state so just to make sure that we have um, this case covered uh, about uh, user space programs hammering hard on syscalls and yeah that's and that works so our idea is to port other tests that might be interesting to to have on upstream and yeah oh, sure just a question. So, what are these other tests? Did you? Yeah, one of them is just test if you have K probes enabled, then we just try to attach uh, um, live patch functions. And yeah, and others. Uh, there, there, there are other tests that creates ten uh, modules and tries to apply them success, successfully, uh, um, really fast, trying to get them right. And yeah, there's a couple of them. I yeah, can't remember. If, if I remember correctly, so we implemented a couple of these uh, corner cases. So the interaction between live patch and K red probes, K probes. Yes. If we could patch a function which is uh, on on stack, I think so. That the, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a couple ones. So the one class is workloads, like Marco said, hammering on source calls and patching stuff, white patching stuff and making sure the transition proceeds nonetheless. And then there's uh, other class of test testing for the interaction between KLP and F-trace versus, for example, K-probes and um, graph-based tracing has, had been, I think some, some are for actual issues we had in the past, so just like uh, regression tests. So. And if I can remember cor correctly, those tests catched a problem recently on PPC. I remember seeing something on the mailing list, uh, some changes that were done. I'm not remember exactly what it was. That was reported by Joe. On PPC, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they are really useful. So that's why we would like to, up to upstream them. And by making the case of tests more flexible, maybe it uh, encourages other uh, people to also upstream their own live patch case of tests and maybe other subsystems um, they, that people would like just to, to have the same uh, purpose than us that compile module on the target system before running the test. That doesn't seem yeah, a problem <laughs> in yeah. my point of view. I think, you know, this identifies what's always been a bit of a gap in the sort of in kernel testing uh, infrastructure, which is we've got um, K self test really designed for testing things totally from user space, as you point out. Um, I'm obligated to shill K unit for testing things entirely from within the kernel, um, where, you know, you have the advantage that, you know, everything's supposed to be built into the kernel. Um, but the disadvantage that if you're playing around with loading and unloading modules, you do need user space stuff to act as that. That's the hybrid hybrid model in between that causes problems. Um, and yeah, K self-tests infrastructure hasn't really been designed around the idea that you don't have the kernel source available and you're not building everything yourself uh, on that machine. Yeah, and, and when I started testing, oh yeah, sorry. Okay. 
No, no, I just wanted to say that when I saw that Gintar target, I thought, okay, so let's start it, right? <laughs> let's build it. But yeah, only copy the compiled sources. Yeah. I was going to say, so recently I've been writing some K unit tests for stack trace, for reliable stack trace stuff, which I'll try and get out soon. But one of the reasons that I used K unit rather than K cell tests for driving much of things, A, is that obviously you can get the infrastructure, but B, it is significantly easier to go throw that on a test system because you just throw one binary there. So if, the, if there were a way to have like in-kernel module loading hooks for this sort of thing, that would make it significantly easier to test this on a wide variety of like embedded systems under virtual machines on things and so on, because you just have to throw one binary and you know you have absolutely everything in one place and it's all in sync. So I think that might be worth looking into what we can do for that. Yeah, just real quick, just to let you know, I just found Shua. She's participating in another talk right now. She said she'll show up later. So I don't know if, you, if it's possible to... If yeah, I invited her twice at least. <laughs> well, no, to, she's yeah. actually participating. She's, yeah. she's participating. In it, oh, okay, so yeah. She can. Uh, but she says she'll show up right after, like, before this session ends, but I don't know. It might interrupt someone else's talk. <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we'll be more than, than happy just to align the, the, ex the expectations or maybe to clarify the, the purpose of the Gentar. But yeah. And is it someone taking good notes, by the way? There is a chat, or there's a note thing they're supposed to be taking notes for. Yeah. <laughs> that way you got at least some yeah. notes all taken. Uh, yeah. So one uh, one issue with forcing the build of the modules on the target system is that that's uh, significantly increasing the resources required on the target system for testing. Um, you need to ship an entire tool chain there. Um, and you know, run the compiler, which is um, a big uplift from K, uh, what K self test currently does. Oh, um, just to, just to follow up uh, with I guess Mark's point. Um, I know with the existing K self tests, we at Red Hat we build the self test modules as part of the ordinary kernel build, and we can package them send those pre-built binaries right to, uh, in its own rpm um, and if we're i don't know if it, the intention is to always build before running the tests um, but i just wanted to highlight that i think if you do that um, do we run into an interesting scenario where the uh, abf of the tests may not match what is in the host kernel in other words does it know that it has all the the, the features that it expected since it's sort of added tree. Yeah, I was just okay. going to echo that. Um, yeah. So yeah, people building tests at the same time as the, the kernel build and packaging them separately uh, has some other problems that solves this. Yeah, so it's just, just maybe maybe one more. Yeah, you and you. I know Bertie. So just one, one, one small remark, because I, I don't know if it was said before. So one, one of the advantages of building modules on the fly so, so that you can suddenly it is really flexible so you can make you can have a little something like a template which you can modify or run generate different kernel kind of modules then compile them and use them immediately and you cannot do that with the pre-compiled thing of course yeah just So one other issue with uh, building the modules at test time rather than at kernel build time is that if you're enforcing module signing, um, you can't sign with the ephemeral key that the kernel uses. You have to have some other mechanism or you can't load the modules you build at all. True. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even consider about module signing and stuff. So yeah, I'm just trying to. <laughs> To make it work for us, but yeah, I haven't even thought about so, that. Because then it really depends on on the whole on the whole scenario. So if you, I mean, if you want to test on some production, which doesn't make sense, but okay, I'll just you know, uh, in a world where the, there are not as many things as available as they should be, like the whole tool chain, as Mark mentioned before, or if you have have a test farm where you can, I mean, somewhere internally where you can be allowed to do different things. I'm not sure. Yeah.
But, but what's the downside of having the module like inside the kernel? Like uh, apart from using more space, let's say when we ship the kernel, but in that case, we could even maybe separate it and provide that as a separate package, let's say, so that we don't have to decouple, you know, the, the build time and, and test time build. Uh, what what are the main disadvantages of having like, like the situation as it is right now? It's the burden for the burden for a new package, maybe, and one more thing to to think about when when running stuff, but. Yeah, I, I haven't considered that as creating a new package. But yeah, there are other code inside lib too uh, that maybe would be nice to move in to case of tests since they are used for testing. Maybe not, but yeah, I haven't considered. But that's for that. So that is one case for us. So I'm not sure if maybe other modules inside there would be also. Yeah, there's still the burden of having uh, a new packet package at the stand. Yes. But Maybe like other subsystems can move, like I'm talking from a distro perspective, of course, other subsystems can provide the similar test module or more test modules and move everything into this testing package. I don't know, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's an option that we haven't considered. Yeah. There are, like, already are some of the, uh, well, there, there are already config options that are forced on by the self-test, and there are a few modules that are only really useful for self-test or you know, for, for testing um, that are, uh, like Steve mentioned, the F-trace uh, use of the sample um, stuff, for example. So that, that that's already a thing, and a lot of systems doing uh, self-test testing do build a custom kernel to run uh, a lot of the case self tests uh, due to their dependencies. I don't think it would be a big disruption for them if uh, the live patching self tests were to add an additional module to build. Uh, they, they just pick that up automatically and everything would work uh, modular the issues with the uh, they already exist with the case self test kernel. Ask her the question you want to ask her? Yeah, yeah please, please uh, ask the question again. Okay. Because I just, I just ran in from the other one. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, no, no problem. So, yeah, our idea to move the code from lib life patch to case of tests is that ability that we would like just to, yeah, I think that I expect yes. that the previous version, right? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we discussed that. Um, so, we landed that we don't want to move that, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but why? Yeah, that wasn't very clear to us. Why the move is not possible since there is already a module there. So the, the we talked about it, and I think that uh, um, BP, BPF BPF is a little bit different beast okay. uh, because of the reason. So. Um, I didn't want to set a precedence to have um, leave, leaving it in um, leaving it in. That's the modules. We are not keep moving that to. It's a module, isn't it? Is it live patch module? Our tests. Yeah, yeah, your tests. Yes, yes, they it's, are. They, they are modules as BPF too, so the same stuff. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, it's um. Your reasons for um, moving them are just summarize them well, for me. Yeah. I think I also want to argue that with uh, the fact that it is kind of a different piece. When you said BPF is a different piece, live kernel patching is a different piece because it's not really a subsystem per se. Mm -hmm. It's a way of modifying the kernel, and like BPF, the same thing. It's a way of modifying yeah, right. the kernel. So I think it's very much close to what BPF is doing. So I don't think you would be setting a precedence if you were to allow live patch because you know the DRM is not going to say, well, live patch is doing it. You know, it's, it's basically like, no, there's a reason why I live patch. I think that's the issue is because the code that the module is not part of the kernel at all. Same thing like BPF is not. Is that basically a way to sum it up? Yeah. You're right. And that's also what Mark said before, that it would make some things easier for you as well. If I call it properly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so what I was saying was slightly distinct. It was the more th like for stuff like this, where we're testing in kernel infrastructure, for having that in the kernel 
like, at, like using KUnit rather than being driven from user space is significantly easier. Whether or not this is, whether where this lives doesn't really matter to me. My, my thing was just, if I can more easily drop that on a target system or virtual machine or whatever, that's easier because we can't really get a, in all situations, get a gigantic full file system with compiler, et cetera, in there. You want to be able to move, have, uh, not have the dependency of uh, the building, build into the kernel, and then you want to be able to move it around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. From, from my point of view, like this would create uh, this self test like more than alone, uh, like tool, like this LTP tests are basically universal, so you could test any kernel version with the latest LTP. And with the current self tests are basically kind of connected with uh, with the kernel that are uh, that uh, with the kernel that are in, in that sources because. Basically, the tests depend on the modules that are built with the kernel, with the same kernel sources. But if we move the module sources into the self-test, then we might build like the binaries and also the, the modules that are basically needed just by the self-test from the self-test sources. And it might be kind of make them standalone product or standalone tool that might just be maintained like to, together with, with, with kernel and it might make it more universal and for example for our QA team it might be kind of easier to make a package from it or, or I don't know oh, and also from the point of creating the self-test it might be more useful because now I basically have to uh, always rebuild the modules like together with the kernel and then upgrade the test scripts for these modules and it needs basically yeah and I, I do it the way that I install that uh, I create the RPM then I install it and, and so on so it's okay so like, you, you really want to be able to just take the test module and be able to move it move, move it from system to system without depending on the kernel. That's one thing. Yeah. The second thing you're mentioning is you want to be able to put it in other test suites if you if you so choose. And um, and and this is one single module. I'm assuming, correct? Uh, no, we are talking about like the live patch self tests are using. I don't know ten modules at the moment, yes. but I'm sure Around that there modules, will be more. Eight, we won't have any security implications, I suppose, if we if we move this uh, module around and somebody, it's, it's, it, are there any security implications that no, we have to worry about? I, I don't think so, because like you need a root uh, rights to load yeah, the module, like that, so yes. yeah. Okay, let's try. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and our future work maybe was to just enable maybe some flag to, to Gentar, maybe to copy sources, maybe to keep the current uh, uh, the current approach and then move the sources so the, the person who are uh, created the Gentar can choose to copy only the binaries or the or the source code to, to being built. But yeah, that's an idea. So that's all that I had today. Thank you. Okay, we still have two minutes. So, are there more questions or comments? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, if I understand the idea correctly, um, we should be able to um, run newer self tests against an older kernel. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And so, you probably don't have one and a half minutes to answer this. But um, would that imply then the self-test should be aware of what the host kernel is running and what it supports? And does live patching subsystem make that easy to you know, ascertain? 
Yeah, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not so, sure. Yeah. So that would be future, future work, saying maybe make it easy so that the, the tester can somehow figure out what do I do for yeah. Yeah, I, I think we might version. do a similar thing to what F trays does do. So just, you know. Okay. Copy what they the, do. The, the features are present, so it just unresolved them. So yeah, self-test in general, we, we have been able to run them on older kernels. Um, that's the model. The only exception is BPF because of reasons of um, LLVM and then the, 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 reason, the way they need a certain environment, they can't do that. Um, when we do this, I would like to keep that, um, that we can just take um, newer um, self-tests and be able to run on stables for good reasons because you're getting more coverage. But, um, but also, um, it helps us as we add features we are testing going back back to the older yeah. kernels. So I was just, just to reiterate the point I was trying to make earlier is that case of tests and things like F-Trace generally have tested user space interfaces to the F-Trace functionality, right? They're not testing the internal kernel parts of this sort of thing, which is a big difference. And so that, that's one of the reasons it's, it's easy to write tests that carry on, uh, that can work on older kernels, whatever, because you don't have internal API changes that break things at some point in time. Well, technically, we do these the modules that we're testing as like the direct trampolines. Sure, but the actual users, so I, I appreciate that. I don't run the test modules. I The vast bulk of those tests are just right. shell scripts poking the SysFS in space, right? Yeah, so you, yeah, so you can get the vast majority of the benefit of those tests by just yes. testing. Yes, these. yes. Okay, I guess so what you're saying is basically live kernel patching testing is useless without the module. Yeah, and, and it's testing potentially core internal APIs that may change over time. So you can have, yes. not, necessarily F, not necessarily live patch related, right. but whatever the thing you're actually testing patch on. So actually, there's, I think, more of a risk of breakage there. It might be minimal, it might be okay, but you're probably gonna have to version the module and do a bunch of things there. And what we were saying about with KUnit earlier is that because that's in the kernel, if you can keep that, if, if it's possible mm -hmm. to write tests in there, they're naturally gonna be versioned with the kernel in there and you can drive them from user space. Yeah, and also one thing is the stuff that I'm testing a lot of times with AppTrace, stuff like that, not all of it is going to be compiled on production systems where live patch is, is done on production systems all the time. So you really wanna be able to just say, hey, can I test this production system without having to recompile the kernel with a new module? So yeah, you do have to, you, yeah, so, uh, right. So you do have to keep that in mind that when you are testing, that um, you, uh, your module, since you're separating your module from the uh, kernel, so you do want to make sure, that was the advantage with the light seed. When you are in there, it, it's part of the kernel and then you were able to, shell scripts draw, draw the test in the test module, but now you're separating that. So you do have more things to worry about depending on the um, kernel release versus your test module. Yeah. So your test module, um, then you have to worry about, which we do now, because we do have tests that if you are, if we're running newer tests on a older kernel, and even the syscalls, you might not have all the features supported. So you have to make sure that your tests can make a, a determination that your feature is not available to test. So the same yeah. things yeah. that apply to KSL test, would, since you're removing it from the library, it's no longer in the kernel. So what, what happens is you will have a lot less tied to the kernel. So that's something you have to, to be concerned about. And then uh, um, I would generally recommend for people, kernel developers though, um, to test the test, test and the kernel together. Yeah. Because that's the only, that's the reason we have case of test. Having said that, um, if you do want to separate it, you do have to worry about all of those things. I just wanted to uh, say uh, regarding the KUNI test, we definitely leave like uh, test modules because the live patching needs to test uh, if it works when the live patch module is loaded and unloaded and so on. So I won't say much, yeah. but I think we have, uh, we, there are things we could investigate there. Okay, thank you. Thank you.